Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. I know we have some visitors, so if you don't know me, my name is Ken Delisle. I'm the one who's privileged to be here as minister. And if you need washrooms, they're out through the hallway to your left. Our call to worship. People of God, come. For the light of joy beckons us together. People of God, come, for the light of joy beckons us together, asking, who are you? What is your great joy? And continuing with our prayer of approach, come, great spirit of joy, and fill our hearts and minds today. Come, enlivening comforter, and give us the courage to proclaim and celebrate all that sparks the divine flame within us. Come, for we are ready to hear your words and feel your presence. I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing hymn number 100, Verses 1, 2, and 4. We wait, we wait, not because we do not know the story of Jesus, and not because you are not already and always here. We wait, because to wait is to expect something more. To wait is to expect that the story might enter our hearts and our world in new ways, to bring the change for which we long. As we light the candle of joy, we remember the stories of God's loyalty throughout creation. We give thanks for the messengers, the apostles, prophets, artists, sages, and faithful ones present in every age, who bring us the good news of God's restoring love. And we shout with joy, trusting that God is with us and before us, and that God will be born anew in us. 
of hymn number six. I have a few announcements to share with you, so be alert. <laughs> the first one's a good one. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus. There are cupcakes in the back when you leave the church. Everyone get a cupcake <laughs> and sing happy birthday on your soul as you head home. We have a question box. I've told you and asked and invited you to write your comments in that question box. I had four more last week. They're not being ignored. One of the comments will go to worship, two of them will go to the board, and one went to transition. So I can't give you an answer to them yet, but they are being looked into and, and honored and celebrated. There are envelopes and newsletters in the back to pick up. Uh, there's also still reminding you there's a sign-up sheet for those who want to help with the Christmas ha hampers. Please have a look and make, uh, they're just about all filled. But if you take a look at the board here on your, well, my left, as you go out, and you see if you can fill in some of the blank spaces. Wednesday night, we need some help with packing. That's going to be at 7 o'clock. Again, have a look and sign up. And a reminder, donation envelopes are still available. If you want to fill out the sheet, the checks, and leave us a couple of $10,000, that'll be fine. <laughs> we'll find a use for it. One dollar will also be fine. We'll, fine, we'll find a use for it. And I, oh, one more. The choir has been working on a cantata. We weren't sure we were going to do it until this morning. So we're going to do it next week. But <laughs> we need a narrator, at least one narrator. We could go as many as seven narrators. So if anybody is going, know you're going to be here next Sunday and are willing to read just a page or to read all seven pages, whatever, let me know. I need to fill out those spaces quickly so that we can present to you next week our wonderful cantata. Are there other announcements that need to be shared? Then I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing hymn number one, verses one, five, and six. When we get to verse six, any of the children who want to come forward for the baptism, come up and watch. Hymn number one. <coughs>
On behalf of the Congregation of Central United Church, I present for the initiation into the body of Christ through baptism. Ewan Jeremy Didich, son of Carolyn and Jeremy Didich, Emily Sheila Zuba, daughter of Patricia and Shane Zuba, Peyton Rose Farquhar, daughter of Dara Curtis and Michael Farquhar. Let us pray together our creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. This morning, we gather at this font to affirm God's love for these children. What can we affirm about them? What do we hope for them? I ask all the parents, you have brought your children here for baptism. Do you believe in God and in God's love? It says boldly. <laughs> Do you believe that God has made known to us in Jesus of Nazareth, who lived and died and lives again? Yes. Do you believe that God, by God's spirit, is active in the world to direct and strengthen you? Do you promise, with the help of God, to provide a loving home for your children, to help them learn the teachings of Jesus, and encourage them to grow in wisdom and truth? I ask the godparents, should the responsibility for the Christian care and nurture of this child come to you, are you willing to fulfill your vows made by their parents today? Congregation, as a baptized and baptizing community, do you receive these children into the Christian church? We receive them in joy, and we commit ourselves to you to the ministry which us all. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for the gift of creation, and within it, the gift of water. Over its on-shaped promise, your spirit hovered at creation, with water you sustain the earth. Through water you led the children of Israel to freedom. In the waters of Jordan, your child Jesus was baptized. Now may your spirit be upon us in what we do here, that this water may be a sign for all of new life in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. What is the name of this child? Can I come in here? No? Okay. <laughs> you and Jeremy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whom we also know as Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Jer you and Jeremy, you are marked with the sign of the cross to show that you are Christ forever. Staying on hand. You and Jeremy, the power of the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful witness of, witness of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. What is the name of this child? No, I can tell. I can tell. You're smiling, but I can tell. <laughs> Emily Sheila, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whom we also know as Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Emily Sheila, I mark you with the sign of the cross to show that you are Christ forever. Emily Sheila, the power of the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of the water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> and what is the name of this child? and rose, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whom we also know as Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Peyton Rose, I mark you with the sign of the cross, yes, to show that you belong to Christ forever. And here. Peyton Rose, the power of the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us welcome our new brothers and sisters into the fold. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who loves and encourages us like a parent, be with these parents as they seek to live out the promises they have made here today. Be their strength in the midst of words, their wisdom in challenging times, their forgiveness when things have gone wrong. Help us to provide a supportive community surrounding them with love and encouragement as they journey in faith with their children. We pray as the followers of the way of Jesus. Amen. as a little child. <laughs> if it's a surprise to Anthony, it's required. It wasn't a surprise to Mary.
When God brought Zion's captives home, it seemed to us like a dream. Then they said among the nations, God has done great things for them. said among the nations, God has done great things for them. I think I read that one. <laughs> Restore our fortunes, O God, as streams refresh the Negev. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed for sowing. Isaiah 61, <clears throat> verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The Spirit of our God is upon me because God has anointed me. The Holy One has sent me to bring good news to, be, to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes and oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of our God, the display God's glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, <coughs> the devastations of many generations. For I, your God, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give my followers their recompense. 
and I will make the, an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom God has blessed. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. <coughs> the next reading is from Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ, Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace sanctify you entirely. You may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of Jesus the Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this and he will do this. Stop. Another one. John chapter 1, verses 6, 8, 18 and 19, 22 and 23. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that, a, not, that a, all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify the light. No one has ever seen God. It is the only begotten ever at Abba's side who has revealed God to us. This is the testimony given by John when Jesus sent priests and levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of Yahweh, as the prophet Isaiah said. These readings are bread for our journey. Of these two. One minute. You're done. Oh, good. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> This Sunday is observed in many Christian churches as Rejoice Sunday. Joy is founded in the confidence that we have that God is in the midst of our lives, unfolding and fulfilling all the promises made to us. And our waiting for the birth of the Messiah is nearly ended. The one who promised to give us peace, equality, Justice and love for all is about to be born. And we will rejoice. The psalm tells us we will sing the song of joy. But Paul asks us, what are you waiting for? We should rejoice always. You are blessed and loved by our Creator and by Christ so be happy and rejoice always, meaning now. God promises restoration and healing. God has done great things for God's people in the past and is doing great things in our own lives today. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I know I find it hard to rejoice always. That doesn't mean that I forget that I am loved unconditionally by the power that created me. At least I don't think it does. I hope it doesn't. Last week's reflection told us that if we wanted good news and comfort in our lives, then look for God. I didn't do too well on that score either this week. It's hard to rejoice always and to look for God when the steering wheel in the car got rather stiff on my way to home in Winnipeg last Sunday and $1,500 later get it on Tuesday. <laughs> it's hard to rejoice and know that how many of us felt that last Sunday's service wasn't as worshipful as we hoped and planned it would be. It's hard to rejoice in a season that expects so much from us. This is a season where we get so busy that we're likely to burn out or drop out from the stress of trying to make everything so beautiful and perfect. But during the week, when I knew I was moving away from this season of joy, I remembered a worship service at the last Settlement Commission meeting. <clears throat> Judy Hare, conference personnel officer, told of a worship service she had attended at our national office. People created a joy jar. <clears throat> you were invited to take a few minutes and write down some moments of joy that you remember and put them in the jar. Then on days when things are difficult, you sit with the jar and read as many of those joyful moments you need to get yourself restored, rebalanced, to be joyful again. So mentally I did that, because I didn't have my jar yet. I made it later. And then I remembered someone at that meeting, oh, sorry, then I called someone I hadn't seen in 20 years. And the joy in her voice and in our conversation helped me get restored. And I remembered at that Settlement Commission meeting, a very dear friend, very quietly, you know how you have these side conversations you're not supposed to have at meetings? She leaned over and said, what would you put as a moment of joy? And without hesitation, I said, it was serving communion to a mother who was breastfeeding. It was such a holy moment, giving the bread of life to a mother who was giving the milk of life to a child. And then I remembered one of our foster children who is having real difficulty that first Christmas with us. We talked to him and learned that he and his brother were taken into care on Christmas Day from the family dinner. So we talked about what our traditions were and what to expect with us and then told him he didn't have to participate. We told him we had a gift for him but we didn't know if any of the other kids had gifts for him or not. And he didn't have to buy us a gift. The choice was his. Two or three days later, after he received his allowance, the first thing he did was to go and buy candy canes for the tree. His gift for all of us. Children often bring us joy and headaches, but joy. Like this morning's baptisms, and the miracle of Patton Rose surviving her premature birth and playing Jesus in our pageant. Isaiah tells us that their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom God has blessed. We are all blessed by God. We are all 
loved by God. Maybe a joy jar or a joy box or just a picture of it is enough to rebalance ourselves whatever is happening in our life. I want to close with a reading from Rumor's newsletter. It was printed in 2004. It talks about changing our ideas of what's important for this season. All it says, it was written by Wendy W.K. of Burlington, Ontario. If I decorate my house perfectly with plaid bows, strands of twinkling lights and shiny balls, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another decorator. If I slave away in the kitchen making dozens of Christmas cookies, preparing gourmet meals and arranging a beautifully adorned table at mealtime, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another cook. If I work at the soup kitchen, carol in the nursing homes, and give all that I have to charity, but do not show love to my family, it profits me nothing. If I trim the spruce with shimmering angels and crocheted snowflakes, attend a myriad of holiday parties and sing in the choir's cantata, but do not focus on Christ, I have missed the point. Love stops the cooking to hug the child. Love sets aside the decorating to kiss the spouse. Love is kind, though harried and tired. Love doesn't envy another's home that has coordinated Christmas china and table linens. Love doesn't yell at the kids to get out of the way, but is thankful that they are there to be in the way. Love doesn't give only to those who are able to give in return, but rejoices in giving to those who can't. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Video games will break. Pearl necklaces will get lost. Golf clubs will rust. But giving the gift of love will endure forever. Amen. God bless us on our journey. There's a change in the program. We're not going to do hymn number 455. We're going to do hymn number 445. A little child, the Savior came. I invite you to stand as you were able.
missions. Do I have it? Our minute for missions. Radio provides background noise when you make dinner. You can watch TV and knit. Hours at a computer are spent multitasking. But when you read a magazine, your entire field of vision is filled with printed images, words, and pictures. When you sit down with the United Church Observer, you are welcome to a place of contemplation where you will find conversations about things that matter. The publishers are deeply grateful for your loyalty and want to continue to produce a publication that is worthy of it. The oldest continuously published magazine in North America and the second oldest in the English-speaking world, the United Church Observer has engaged Canadians for 144, 184 years. Award-winning journalism focused on issues of faith, justice, and contemporary living encourages people in the pews and beyond to broaden their understanding of what it means to be a Christian in Canada today. This important work is supported by the Mission and Service Grant received annually through the efforts of congregations like ours. As Doug Hammarskjöld said, for all that has been, thanks. For all that will be, yes. Please give generously. Paul says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. On this Advent Sunday of joy and of baptism, let us give joyfully. Our offering will now be gathered. We'll do our prayer together. We come with joy, thankful for the many blessings we have been given. May these gifts given to this church in various ways and the service of our hands make a difference 
as we seek to follow Jesus' way. Amen. May we be seated. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our spirits rejoice in God, for you look with favor upon all your people. You have done great things and shown mercy through the ages. We give thanks for the strength you show in the midst of adversity and for times of challenge when we think we have all the answers. We pray for all those in positions of leadership and authority that they may be guided by a sense of justice and humility. We pray for those who may be too timid to speak out, that they may find a voice with which to claim their rightful place. We pray for a just sharing of the, all the earth's resources. Keep us mindful of times when we can use things more wisely. Help us to reduce waste, to recycle, and to share. May we never forget how you keep your promises, how you care for all of your children, the descendants of Abraham through Sarah and through Hagar, and all your other children besides. Help us to proclaim your promises of unconditional, never-ending love in this sacred season and beyond. O God of this world, may your face shine on all nations and all holy days. Today we pray especially for the nations Bene, Kotarvri, and Togo. We pray for Hispanic Christians who December the 16th to the 25th celebrate the feast of Jose Navidas, meaning the lodgings, which commemorates the journey of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem in preparation for the birth of Jesus. We also pray for Jews who celebrate Hanukkah, the festival of lights, from December 17th to the 24th. May these holy days bring us all closer to peace. We pray for those who are in need, those we know and those we don't know. We ask that all who are in sick in mind, body, or soul will meet someone who will be your presence to them. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for our closing hymn number 27.
And just before we do the commissioning, remember to get a cupcake. Our commissioning together. God is close and we will rejoice. The world awaits and we will rejoice. Incarnation is soon and we will rejoice. The prophet speaks and we will rejoice. God is restoring our fortunes and we will rejoice. We shout with joy and we will rejoice.